Boom! We're back. Oh, Three yeah. old friends. <laughs> okay, welcome back, everybody. Episode 9, Three Old Friends. As always, I'm Pat. Mike is here, and we are joined by our lovely third, Mr. Brian Murray. Say hi, Brian. Hello, glad to be here. Ah, great to see. He just moved somewhere else, and his internet is not the best. So we're going to we're gonna hope that everything stays consistent. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to launch right into our days. And since, Brian, you're our guest... How how has your life been? I feel like I haven't talked to you in a long time, but you always have so much to say. It's been good, man. You know, I just moved into a new place. Um, I'm excited about that, you know, getting started at this new uh, new spot that I'm in, you know, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well. I've been working a lot. That, that's all I got. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, we'll be we'll be talking a lot about that more in the later in the episode when we get to the hotel business that Brian is in, which I should have mentioned in the freaking beginning. I already messed up the intro. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Mike, how has your week been? It's been a little bit. That was, it's been, uh, it's been good. I, uh, I did want to mention that Brian and I pulled away the book and the Tide Pods, uh, pretty much at the same time. And Pat, you were late and you just had shades. So you could see us. They were darkened shades. Okay. Shameful. (laughs) Um, but no, my, uh, my week's been good. Um, I was out of town. I was in, uh, Colorado Springs last week for, uh, a training, but I actually had to drive back up to Laramie Wednesday, uh, stayed the night, drove back down Thursday. So I have gone to Colorado Springs back to back four times. And then I have to go back down Sunday, uh, again. So I, uh, I'm pretty sick of, uh, driving down to Colorado Springs. Um, I like, you know, it's 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 about a 200 mile one way journey, but that's okay. Um, but I got a sick haircut, which I'm pretty yeah, pretty excited you look, about. You look pretty good. Thank you. I got this for my training. They gave us these cool uh, pullovers. So shout out the navigators for giving us one of these cool little pullover things. Uh, and it's quite handy because it got real chilly here in Laramie. It was 74 today, and then all of a sudden it just got real chilly. Um, but uh let's see what else oh uh last night i went to a brazilian steakhouse for the first time Ooh, Ooh. it's lovely you guys, have you guys ever been no but it sounds how many fancy. did you have uh did you say how many how much meat oh i had <laughs> i had a good chunk so so pat they what they do is they come around with meat on skewers Oh, and God. then if if, a, if if the the table thing is flipped to green, then they just keep coming with meat until you tell them to stop. If it's red, they won't come to your table. Uh, and uh, they had sixteen different meats, uh, and I had I tried all of them. I tried all of them. I even had chicken heart. I had chicken heart, and it was it was interesting. Ooh. It was very interesting. Delicious. Uh, they had uh, I guess this technique. Well, uh, sort of because it was bacon wrapped, but it was bacon wrapped. Uh, Deets? No, that's not a fruit, is it? Dates? Dates. 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 Thank Deets. you. <laughs> Did you eat like, dates from a date? Huh? Dayton date? Oh. Did you eat uh, dates from the date? You know, date and date? <laughs> Just keep saying it, Brian. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go through eventually. <laughs> uh, date and date. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> but uh, But yeah, it was really good. Uh, oh. I ate a lot, uh, and then they had an unlimited salad bar, which I skipped over the salad part. But at the salad bar, they had uh, mac and cheese that was delicious. It had like the shell noodles uh, that you know you get when you're like five. Oh <laughs> my gosh! Trip down memory lane, and I I had a ton, I had a ton of them. So uh, that was good. Uh, I got this new book that I was holding up for everybody, Blue Lake Jazz. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so you know, life is good. Life is life is looking looking up. So great. Yeah. That's what about awesome. you, Pat? What's going on your week? Well, I finally got my everything straightened out with the USPS. I will be starting Monday. I go in for my yeah. orientation in Harrisburg, and I will be I will be doing that for a little bit, seeing what's. Do what. they have a they have a swear in ceremony where you have to you have to swear in and say <laughs> I, I will faithfully serve the United States USPS. <laughs> Uh, uh, I hope, man, it'll just be like me and like few other kids who just got out of high school. <laughs> I solemnly swear to protect the short shorts 
<laughs> from any dogs, <laughs> from any weather, and I believe that our mail will be delivered on time. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it doesn't, in which case it's it not my fault. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I've definitely had this conversation with Brian where uh, he thinks that I would look really good walking around in short shorts, completely burnt out of my brains. I, I think that's the look, you know, that's what the kids are going for. I mean, as you as you can see in my recording, it, it might just be the light, but I am very, very pale. So I don't think I'm ready for this job at all. It's yeah, going to be a wake up call. I think the lighting's helping you out. Yeah, you think? Oh, wow. You think yeah, I'm even guys, whiter than on the recording? Yeah. <sighs> well, that's that's about it's all I have going though. on in my week. I have my, my aunt coming up from Oregon. She's been helping my mom. She's trying to move Ooh. out of her house kind of thing. So they're going to come up and spend a day or two here. And, uh, yeah. And then I start my work. This is Pat's moving out. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's Everybody's moving around places. I heard that your mom settled in nicely. In her new house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell you, Brian. My mom bought a new house. No, she didn't move in yet. She moves in June 21st. Ah, I got misinformation. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So if any of you are around in the Jersey area on the 21st, you know, lend your muscles. I leave the 20th from the Jersey area, so sorry. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> Slacker. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I think we're just going to get right into the meat and potatoes of our of our episode here. Brian is one of the most social, funniest people that we know, and he is going to tell us about one of the most interesting professions in the world, and that is making other people happy when they travel, you know, giving them places to stay, putting up with all their BS, all that stuff, and I know Brian has tons and tons of stories about that, that... I, I laugh out loud about every single time I hear them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brian, uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead? Oh, it's, and, it's an interesting business to get into. <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting with the uh, with the freezing of the, yeah, the, the little leg. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brian, can you hear us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he said when he freezes that we just go. So uh, we don't know anything about the hotel business. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> we can't hear you. I think. I think. Oh, is He's he back? There? He's back. Broke the Am I back? You're back. A little bit. You're frozen again, but you're back. I'm back. I can hear you. This is good I'm listening back. material right here. You can hear me. <laughs> Yeah. Am I back? Am I back? Yes. <laughs> uh, this is. Do you see me? The, yeah, this is probably the worst it's been since you got on the Zoom. Since yeah, you got on this is the call. progressively going downhill. But it looks like you're back now. I think people are coming back. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Pa- uh, Brian, what I was going to say is why don't you start. Um, with like from when you graduated high school, what did you do? Where'd you go? Kind of take us from there, from there to where you are now. We'd love to, we'd love to hear your journey, all the jobs you've done, kind of. Um, and if you want to tell people about the hospitality field, but kind of walk us through what's what's been going on in your life since uh, since high school. Yeah, so I graduated high school. I ended up going to community college for a couple of years. Went off to Kansas State. Uh, I finished my degree in hospitality management last year. Throughout there, worked at plenty of hotels and did all sorts of jobs, including banquets. Um, I've, I've worked in housekeeping, and right now I'm a front desk manager over at a hotel here in Mammoth Lakes, California. Um, so, yeah, you know, I've, I've been in the industry for a little while. Um, but, yeah, just getting my career started in management and you know, progressively going through. You recently got a, a job promotion, right? Now you're working as a manager, or have you had that for a while? I've I've had this. So I've been working as a manager for about a year, um, but I just got this position about six months ago. I, I work typically seasonally, so every six months you kind of move. I decided to stay here for a little bit longer and see where it goes. 
That's right on. And then you also spent time up in Glacier, Montana. Yep. So I spent two seasons up there. So two summer seasons. I spent one as a housekeeper and one as actually their lodge manager. So I kind of ran all the, um, the whole lodge up there. That was only 27 rooms, but still coming fresh out of college. You no, know, a little intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, right on. Definitely. Right on. Yeah. He used to uh, he used to work at the Hilton uh, when he worked in uh, uh, Kansas, and uh, I I did use the discount. He somehow hooked me up with the discount. I don't remember how you did it, uh, but it was yeah, it was quite nice. It was very it was very nice. It's a it's a great perk to have. <laughs> yeah, right on. Pat, do you have any questions for Brian? Yeah, I mean, of course I do. But first, I just want to acknowledge this is the first time the three old friends are in three different time zones at one time. I think that's something to to think about for a second. And that I'm not the farthest west. Yeah, that too. Can't make fun of you anymore. <laughs> just lay him on me. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Anyway, I mean... I know that you have a ton of really fun stories that I love hearing over and over and over again, Mm -hmm. but I'd love to hear maybe top three funniest ones or like top three people suck ones kind of stories like that. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So one of my, one of my big parts of my job that I have now is when we're at full capacity at the hotel and somebody's just not leaving, we got to go up and, knock on their door and basically get them to, to leave. So I love it whenever I go up with my housekeeping manager, who's like the sweetest person on earth. And he likes coming with me because he, he actually mentioned, he was like, I like watching you be the bad guy. And I'm like, I, I don't know what that means, but whatever, <laughs> I'm going with it. So I knock on this one lady's door and it's like one o'clock. Our checkout time's at 11. So it's two hours past and we got people coming in. So I knock on her door. She's frazzled, whatever. And I explained to her the situation that I need her out of the room immediately. Yeah. X, Y, and Z. And um, she was like, Hey, can I get it like an extra 15 minutes? So I have the housekeeping manager standing right next to me. And I go, well, you got to ask him you're on his time right now. And him being the sweetest person on earth and throwing him off guard, he was like, no, you're fine. You're all good. And he literally like punched me in the shoulder and was like, don't do that to me again. I'm like, you wanted to come along. So that, that was definitely one that was a good time. Um, Let's see. There, There are so many moments that like you have that people suck in the moment, but you realize that, Oh, what a weird time to lose you. We're <laughs> at, we're our closest city is Reno. That's about three hours away. And so it's coming from, yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. So yeah, we're pretty remote. So people are driving five, six, seven hours to come up and are, um, you know, are usually pretty saucy, pretty grumpy, whatever. So you, you can tell when somebody is, you know, coming after you or whatever, that's just upset because they've been on the road all day, they're tired, or just somebody who's just legitimately an asshole. And that's it. <laughs> like, you got to differentiate between the two and figure it out. But yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a ton of, you know, I've had a ton of experiences over the past year, and it's just, <laughs> you know... <laughs> There's almost just too many stories to to even begin unraveling. I think I think he's paused. I think he's done talking. <laughs> I, I'm done talking. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, you you uh, once told us a story, um, and I might be butchering this, but it was when you were up in Glacier and. Uh, Something about the the curtains, the the sh- like the or the sheets or something, so, like there's blood all over them. Is that is that am I not am I dreaming that or is that is that a real story? 
So that was a real story at one okay. of my hotels while I was working as a housekeeper. Um, this, this hotel was kind of in the middle of the woods. Like people would come in off, you know, really long hikes off of two week, you know, journeys in the woods and stuff like that. Come back to our hotel to get a shower and whatever. And a lot of times they would use our, our rooms almost as like a field hospital. So like they're stitching themselves up. They're doing all this other stuff. So when I walked into the room half the time, it was just like, all right, here's another one, <laughs> you know, and it, it wasn't as bad as I made it out, but it was just like, there was definitely enough there that you're like, all right, somebody got pretty beat up on a hike or something like that. They're patching themselves up here. Here we go. Or they, or they killed somebody and they're trying to dispose of the body, you know? Oh God. And it wasn't that much. I don't think <laughs> he's efficient. <laughs> Listen, you never know. It's it's you know, it's in the middle of nowhere. You said it yourself, it's in the woods. It is in the woods. You're correct. <laughs> Dang. That's wild. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, just, uh, you know. Ooh, wow. It's All funny it's talking at the same time. <laughs> it's funny that I have uh when I when I live in the dorms of Wyoming, they uh we had bathtubs. I don't ask me why we had bathtubs, but people would use. We had them in Kansas City too. Yeah, and people people would use them to be their like deer like. Um, uh, I, all hunters out there are gonna hate me. Uh, what is the not? Is it skinning it or is it? It's it's like dressing it, right? Processing it, yeah. Processing it, yeah. Listen, I don't hunt, but uh, they would use it. They'd use the bathtubs for that. Uh, and your story of you reminded me of like them like doing that because of using uh, hotel rooms as a field hospital. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a buddy in college that uh, skinned a coyote in one of our showers at, in the dorms, and he he just like he somehow got a hold of this thing and it like froze in his car, so he brought it up the stairs and just skinned it in the shower. It was you know living in Kansas with wild people. <laughs> my god yeah i don't know yeah, if that's I mean, just like a west to midwest thing we did not have bathtubs at stockton and why on earth would you ever take a community bath in a college dorm that's disgusting <laughs> yeah. hey mate, listen some part people, of it man yeah maybe it's some people are into that stuff you know oh, like yeah? here's the thing you want to say the wyoming ones the wyoming ones didn't have like curtains so like the bathtub was just kind of like open, like just there, and then there was two showers right next to it. So if you were sitting in the bathtub and you had it like filled with water, you're just kind of sitting there. If somebody walks into the bathroom, you just kind of wave at them while they're uh, while they're dressing to get to the uh, the shower, you know. Well, I mean, if if you have the knowledge that people are skinning dead animals in the bathtub, are you really like gonna go take a bath? I mean, you could it, I, like that doesn't stop. <laughs> Soap? I yeah. never did, but you know. <laughs> oh my god! Listen, Brian, Brian, as as a as a hotel guy, you can attest. Like, how clean do the bathtubs get in like uh, hotels? Ooh, the dirty. Very secrets. clean. They go through a. Um, so yeah, no, I mean they we use a lot of harsh chemicals and stuff like that, like um, to go after all that um, in there, and then also we have our. Uh, housekeeping staff that goes by at least at the hotel I'm working at now and they have uh, supervisors to come by and make sure everything's all right so they do get pretty clean okay well, does that does that vary by resort slash like motel six are they going to be doing the same same level of cleaning as you know the marriott i i would say no um it just depends where you're going but yet again, they you could have a Motel 6 that's perfectly clean and safe to stay in. But um, yeah, and then you could also have Marriott that might have had a room that was missed or something like that. So it's yeah. just it's one of those where no matter where you're staying, like, just be diligent, you know, take a look at stuff. Um, make sure that it's up to your standard. And, you know, because yet again, you might have somebody um, that's inspecting rooms or something like that that's just had an off day you know yeah i mean i know that i've had my off days and you know as a housekeeper and somebody's come by and been like hey 
you got to go back and touch that up or something like that, you know? So yeah. it, it's just like with any job. You well, got to make sure you, that. Yeah. Sometimes you're taking a dump and you, you miss the toilet <laughs> and you, you hit the, you hit the, uh, the tub and it's just a quick wipe and good to go. Call it good. That's really, I've never <laughs> had to deal with that in my career so far. <laughs> the old dump and tub. <laughs> Yeah. Of course, you can't yeah, make it then, to the toilet, but at least the bathtub is there. <laughs> it's like two feet, you, it's a two foot walk. <laughs> and you waffle stomp it down the drain, you know? You know, you never know. I'm, that's, I'm not judging, but I'm <laughs> also going to be <laughs> I mean, you're telling me, Brian, you've never seen that in all your days. In all of the hotels you've worked no, in, you've never seen that. Fortunately, no, I have not. <laughs> That have would be heard, a first. Have you heard stories about it? Have you had to do it? No, I've never had to do it. And no, I haven't. Fortunately, I haven't heard any stories of that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So thankfully, from all of my experience, I'm not saying that's never happened before, but at least at the places that I have in recent history, that has not happened. <laughs> <laughs> The closest right. thing to that is our, our hotel is pet friendly. So you'll get people that bring their dogs in and they just like crap all over the floor or whatever. And we just charge them, you know, to get it cleaned. And, or like we had one room that had to get the carpet replaced it was that bad. You have a, you have anybody that's ever pulled an Amber Heard? Never, never a dump in the bed. No, fortunately you know, we didn't have a it's always sunny moment where it was like who pooped in the bed. But no, we you know fortunately I haven't had that yet. <laughs> right. Also this made me think of a story again, this goes back to your time in Glacier. Uh mm -hmm. there was there a story about a bear? Oh there was a lot or... of stories about bears, yeah. <laughs> well, no, but like a bear like in the hotel or something. I thought something happened or bear sprayed. You got bear sprayed, right? <laughs> I don't think he would have. Boy, when the internet kicks back in, this is going to be a hoot. <laughs> I, I'm like 90% sure he got sprayed with bear spray or somebody got sprayed with, sprayed with bear spray. Yeah, it was not him uh, though. He would not be in this well good shape. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. 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 The <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, what is uh what is the protocol here if we lose a guest? I think we got to hang up on him and let him rejoin. So, I don't know how to keep him out. I think you <laughs> like Oh, okay. He's frozen in a different position now. That's a, that's a start. Can you can you remove him and just have him call back? Uh, he could just leave himself and then come back in. Well, can you cut him because he's he can't hear us? Uh, no, <laughs> because it'll mess up the recording. Everything will be else. Me. Am I am I still on it? There he is. <laughs> Brian, can you hear us? Oh, there he Am is. Am I back on? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Am I back on? What's the yeah. protocol zero? There you go. Now we're good. And he's frozen again. <laughs> and he's frozen again. Uh, oh, oh, he's muted. There he's he unmuted. Is. Wow, this is a roller coaster yeah. of emotions. It is. Um, uh, so I think you're asking, though. You're asking if I ever had a bear in the hotel? Or was it? It was bear spray. You got bear sprayed or something, right? So, a little both. I was, so, up at Glacier, um, we had bears that would walk by the property and stuff like that, come up to the windows and, and do whatever. Actually, at this property that I'm at now, part of our job responsibility is to chase bears out of the hotel. So, like, we'll have them just walk on in, and then, like, especially the night auditor, who's there by himself, you gotta, like, go up and, like, chase these things out. And, <laughs> like, one of my bosses actually got chased out of the hotel by a bear. <laughs> like came after him. Um, this was like five years ago. But yeah, they'll just kind of walk in and they'll try to get food forever and you just got to shoo them out. That's a paying customer you're shooing out of the, the hotel. 
They're not paying. They're they're a squatter. Ah. <laughs> uh. So, they just like is it like um, uh, like electronic doors? I, why am I blanking on the name of like <laughs> the sliding automatic the sliding doors? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I could have for the life of me think of those. So it's just those, and the bear just kind of just like walks himself in. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, we have side doors there that, like, they can manipulate the handle and get in. Um, They're but yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so they, um, yeah, I mean, those would walk through the lobby, too. And one of our jobs is we have to go out and chew them out. Have you ever done that? I had one up at Glacier walk up to me. I had my back turned, and I turned around, and it was right up on me. And I kind of, you know, chewed it away. I mean, this thing was about two to three feet from me, uh, and you know, once you start chewing at it, it's like, oh, you're not, you're not friendly, and <laughs> just goes off. But if you are friendly, it'll just come up and start like, you know, giving you a bear hug. We're we're <laughs> we're not friendly now. <laughs> I don't want a bear hug. <laughs> That's fair. But wait, what was the what was the 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 bear spray story? So I had somebody somehow, one of my years up there, I forget which one, we were testing bear sprays because, like, we used to get them from rooms. I think it was was a housekeeper. So one of my guys, like, shot it off really quick, and the wind changed direction and went straight back into my face. So I got bear sprayed, which is, like, very heavy pepper spray, like, in the eyes and nose and all that stuff. And there's like, there's nothing really that you can do about it, especially when you're in the woods with your friends. And so you just have to gut it out for like a good, like 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, the tears were flowing. It's the whole thing. My God. Then you just like, like, like used water to rinse out your eyes. Yeah. Like there there wasn't any like accessible. Like I didn't, (laughs) like we were just like off. Oh my god. The one somewhere. So would you, yeah, would that you was recommend a bear story. spray to anybody who wants to keep bears away as somebody who's experienced it? Will it keep the bears away? Black bears most of the time you can just wave your arms and get loud and they'll they'll run off. In grizzly bear country, yeah. Okay. You could be a spokesperson be like survivor of bear spray it'll just be like you on the back of the cans <laughs> thankfully it wasn't like a full like blast of it like it was just like it missed it and came back at me so i didn't get the full like but it, it still wasn't pleasant i can't imagine it would be <laughs> how did it... was it like a conversation like were you guys like were you talking to this guest were you were you interacting with them or were you just like you just happen to be walking by at a bad time and they just just (laughs) shot (laughs) so that was that was with my buddies in the woods but i did have a guest bear spray themselves in the face that was fun so he like was he took it out of his luggage for some reason he had in there the trigger went off it was that point blank rage he bear sprayed himself in the <laughs> eyes and nose, which are the most painful parts. And on his chest, like it actually burned his chest a little bit. My whole second floor of my hotel was like, had bear spray residue. So that was another time where I had to go up and I was basically gassed out. And so I, I had to open up all the windows in the place and get air cross flow going. But yeah, I had to guess bear spray himself in the face. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was like, yeah. That was a Montana too. Do you have to go to hospital? No, he didn't go. I just got him a glass of milk. That was my <laughs> own personal <laughs> milk. <laughs> and like he, he just poured it over his like eyes and then he took a shower. Which actually I think makes it worse because it spreads. But um yeah, he was like, it's, it's fine, like, and I talked to him the next day, he's like, I'm, I'm all good. And that was just really dumb, and I'm like, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> but at that point, yeah, could but you... It... No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but, it, like, at that 
he deployed it on himself in his own room. So, like, the room itself was just, yeah, it was bad. Wait, he deployed it a second time in his room. No, he didn't deploy it. That, he only deployed it once in his room. Okay. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Bring it in his eyes and, and nose. <laughs> so, at that point, had you been bear sprayed yourself in the eye so could you could you could empathize with him or had you just been like dude that sucks to be you kind of thing let me get you a glass of milk <laughs> it, it was one of those where it was like it sucks to be you and it sucks to be me because i have to bring all this stuff in like yeah. while i'm trying to help him so now my nose and throat are burning and my lungs like it's it's all just a bad situation don't deploy bear spray inside or anywhere try to avoid it <laughs> That's too, uh, too good. You could be like Smokey the Bear, but for bear spray, where it's like, oh, don't start forest fires. Um, and you're standing there like, don't spray don't Smokey bear the Bear with bear spray, spray indoors. Indoors? Like, Jesus. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun situation to deal with. I think that could be the way of the like, future. Another thing, that can, another thing that can happen, though, is if you spray it like directly in your nose like you, your nose and throat can close up it's like i was afraid this guy was going into like a shock and like it's we were an funny. hour away from the closest hospital <laughs> mike you, not... wanna, you wanna weigh in no it's it's listen it's not it's not funny i i poor guy poor guy i'm glad to hear everything's all right now like every, everybody's okay <laughs> But uh, I don't know why that's getting me so good right now. That's that's getting me pretty good. Maybe it's because it's probably me getting gassed by by bear spray. I'm I'm yeah. thinking it's because some guy used a practically lethal substance on himself, and then Brian was like, "Hey, I have the solution. Let me get you some milk." <laughs> that helps stop some of the burning. Like it's not gonna fully do that but yeah that, that was the solution at the moment it would have been even funnier if he drank the milk and continued to just have bear spray all over himself <laughs> yeah when i came up here he was like an orangey red color oh my god because <laughs> he still had the bear spray on him Gosh. <laughs> i and so when you did it to yourself you were in the woods i was in the woods and i didn't get a direct shot of it it was like <laughs> It shot out, and then the wind changed direction, came back, uh, you and got was a, like you a, got miss. a small so whiff was, of it. I, exactly, and that was bad enough. I like in my mind. I think what was funnier was picturing you and a bunch of your like coworkers, like in the lobby of a hotel, and you just you just accidentally set one off, and then you're all <laughs> tears in your eyes, and like a guest walks in, and the whole staff is just oh my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it happens every once in a while. Sometimes you just bear spray gets deployed. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta oh, deploy god. the bear spray. Oh god, that, that was yeah, that was definitely not an enjoyable time. <laughs> well, yeah, Brian, I, got one, milk. I got one more. I got one more question for you, and then we should probably uh, yeah. probably wrap up. Um, but uh, out of all the places that you've worked um in terms of physical places um manhattan kansas city um glacier mammoth lakes um and then like all the different hotel resorts which one by far is your favorite and why and why well the one that will always have my heart is glacier and um, the property I worked at last year called the Belton Chalet. It was a 27 room, tiny little hotel. It was built 110 years ago, so it was really old, had a lot of character to it. Um, the property that I'm at now, though, I, I like the staff that I'm working with. Um, not saying that the staff that I worked with last year was um, bad or anything, but what now we're on the same page everything larger facility and with a lot more going on very delicately well, we, put 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. We missed all of your explanation, but we heard Glacier, and we heard that Glacier will always have your heart, so we're going to run with that. Yep. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> but Cool. Well, Pat, you want to do songs? Yeah. So this week we're going to do songs that you hear in a hotel lobby in honor of oh, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, you wanna you wanna lead us off as somebody who spends way too much time in a hotel lobby? So thankfully I get to choose the music. So we ours is a little bit different, but at every other hotel lobby I've been in, the Copacabana by Barry Manilow at some point plays, and it's it's infuriating. <laughs> or Mandy. Song. That's also a good song. It's it's infuriating. I, I could see if it comes on more than once, it would be infuriating, yeah. Oh, whenever you are in an elevator, they have music, it's the Copa Cabana, and I'm just like, I'm ready to, to jump out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike, what what songs do you hear in a hotel lobby? Um, One of the classics, Sorry Miss Jackson. Uh, I don't know who it's by. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, but uh, I always hear "Sorry, Miss Jackson." Outcast. <laughs> Did you say outcast? By outcast, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brian can attest, right? Brian, you've heard that at a lobby too. That that plays in my lobby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From time to time, when I get controls. <laughs> And then my my song for songs that you hear in a hotel lobby is going to be Smile by Uncle Cracker. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Brian mentioned it before we were recording. And I, I like that song. It's, it's fun. <laughs> I hope you smile. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you not. No. I hope you smile. I, I don't think it's that you one, right? Brian, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I honestly, I have no idea what you're doing. I, I thought it was the dying whale for a moment. Like it, it, that's how it's coming through on my end. <laughs> Ryan, what's that? What's that? Um, uh, Le, uh, it, Leanne, Leanne Warwick. I don't know how to say her last name. I don't. Maybe I'm not even pronouncing an artist. And she's. she's I hope you dance. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe a little pitch would help. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of the other way. I'll look it up. You guys keep talking. You guys keep talking. Well, no, listen, that's all we have to talk about, Mike. Now it's just going to be you awkwardly searching something on, on the internet. Well, you guys, you guys fill the time. Fill the time. How about we just end the episode? Let's put our stuff back up, shall we? Oh, God, I put my time up. Ah. Take the hint, Mike. Yeah. That book by Le- by Leanne, Leanne Womack, I Hope You Dance. It is a song. Come on now. Well, you mixed two songs. Anyway, <laughs> thanks again for watching Three Old Friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, do whatever you do on Spotify and Anchor FM because, quite frankly, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.